In the NBA Summer League, one guy who has played in that league, John Treach, is with former Gorman Gale, now blazing his own NBA trail with Portland, Zach Collins. John. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Las Vegas is the hoops hotbed of the universe for two weeks in July. We are definitely the epicenter. We're not talking about an earthquake. We're talking about NBA Summer League. As anybody who is part of the league, both past and present, seems like they are here this week. And that includes... NBA Summer League alum and Bishop Gorman alum, Zach Collins, thanks for joining us. And to be back in town, where it all began, what's this like for you? It's great. I mean, I, I, anytime I can get back to Vegas and be with my, my family and friends that I grew up with is, is amazing. You know, during the year, if I can come back for a day or two, or obviously in the summertime when I can spend, you know, more than a few weeks here, it's, it's the best. I mean, I'm at the comfort of my own home, and I get to stay with my parents to get a little home cooking, and um, it's great. And I get to, you know, you know, like we talked about before, a little, you know, decompress. So it's nice. And to come to the summer league, a, a place that you went as a fan for many years, and to see how much it's exploded mm. into being a place you can't miss if you're a basketball fan. Right. Well, what's your impression of what it's become? It's crazy. I mean, um, I mean, even from my rookie year till now, it's. I mean, I thought there was a lot of people my rookie year, and now it's like. You know, it's the, like you said, it's the best show in town when it's here. So um, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's definitely, you know, guys, I think, take it a little bit more seriously. And I think uh, the basketball is better because of it. And guys take a little bit more pride in what they're doing out there because there's so many people watching. So um, it, it's definitely grown into something big. It doesn't count in the standings, but as a rookie and as a second year guy, when you played in it, how important is it in your development? Uh, it's very important. I think, you know, anytime you can go out there and get more NBA reps against NBA level guys, I mean, it's going to help you. I mean, experience is the best teacher. So anytime you can get out there and just um, work on your stuff, work on the things that the, the team wants you to work on and just get used to their sets. And so when you come in for a training camp, you're, you know, you're that much more ready. So it was definitely huge in my development. And, you know, you can go out there and they're going to let you make a lot of mistakes. And it's, it's really good for you. Off it comes to Lee. Oh, and blocked by Collins, who came out of nowhere. Going into year three, how have you changed as a player with the Portland Trailblazers? Um, I don't think I've, if, you know, there's anything about me that's really changed. If, I would say a lot of things are, you know, going to be improved upon, and um, I'm not going to really change who I am as a player because I think that's what makes me really good. And um, I think just my, my niche that I kind of found early was on the defensive end and being able to affect shots at the rim and guard smaller guys in the perimeter, and then offensively being able to stretch the floor and just to be, you know, more consistent with those things. And uh, if I can do that, I think, you know, my role will, you know, increase more and more. We Getting drafted isn't a guarantee that you're going to play or even stay in the league. Yeah. A lot of guys, as you know, a lot of your, your friends and guys you competed with in college are going back and forth between the G League and the NBA. You've stayed up, and you went from starting or you know playing in 66 games to playing in 77 games in your second season. Mm -hmm. What has been the key to you establishing yourself? Just, just staying with it. I think, um, you know, early in my rookie year, I've, I kind of went through a lot of DMPs, and it's not really something that I've, I've had to deal with. Um, I know, obviously, in high school, I, I came off the bench a lot and didn't start till my senior year. But when you, when you don't play at all, it, it'll, you know, it'll definitely get to you a little bit. And, you know, I, I just continued to talk to that staff, and they, you know, they just kept giving me confidence and telling me to keep working, keep my head down. And eventually, you know, I got my shot. And you know, haven't really looked back since, so hopefully I can continue to keep working, and again, my role increases. Are you to the point where you identify as a Portland Trailblazer at this point? I mean, going into a third season with one team, in this culture of the NBA is getting to be a rarity. Right, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, I'm, you know, extremely happy that I got drafted to Portland, and it's a place that I tell people all the time I would love to end my career there. Obviously, that's, you know, it's the way the league works, that's pretty, you know, really unlikely, but um, I love the coaching staff. I love the organization. The culture is just, um, it just makes it, you know, fun to come into work every day. So not many people identify more with Las Vegas. Your parents graduated from Las Vegas High. Your sister was a UNLV Rebel grad. And here you are yeah. from Bishop Gorman to Gonzaga and now playing in the NBA and always identifying with Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. But as you become a professional with all those responsibilities and that spotlight, how have you grown or matured as a man? Um, I would say just, you know, continuing. It's, it's a process. It's always, I'm always learning about, you know, how I can be better, you know, off the court, on the court. And, you know, it's, it's a credit to what I have around me. You know, the, 
the people I have around me, my, you know, up to my, my parents, my, this, the friend group I've had since I was in elementary school, and um, just keeping things kind of small has been the, the biggest thing for me. Again, you waited your turn. The team was making lots of transactions. Then the playoffs came around. Mm -hmm. National TV gets on the tr Portland Trailblazers as you make a run to the Western Conference Finals. Mm -hmm. And you're making an impact. You're mm -hmm. playing big fourth quarter minutes. What's mm -hmm. it like to play 16 playoff games in one NBA season? It was, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I mean, obviously the best time of the year is when you're in the playoffs, whether you're in high school, college, or, or the pros. I mean, it's the moment you live for. It's the moment you dream about. And um, just to get out there and, you know, to have that staff believe in me to go out there and, you know, have a chance to make an impact, it was great. And, you know, I just tried to take every opportunity I could and make the most of it. Is that a pressure or a privilege situation when the season could end based on you or your teammates' mistake? I, probably a little bit of both. I mean, I think you, you play so many games in the NBA season, it's hard not to get used to that process and, you know, get used to that, you know, those butterflies before a game or uh, things like that. But um, in the playoffs, man, you don't really have a choice but to, you know, kind of feel that pressure. But at the same time, I mean, you don't really have time to, to be nervous. You have to go out there because it's do or die. How do you handle the ego checks that the association gives you when they're bringing in players mid-season, big men trading for guys like Hassan Whiteside in the off-season. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that? I mean, there's a lot of really, really talented players here, and you, you know, you got to keep working. It's not you can't you live your life in the NBA based on what you know you think's going to happen in a trade or if someone's going to come take your spot. You just got to continue to focus on what you're doing and um, stay in the gym, continue to get better, and you know, control the things you can control. There's a lot of floundering franchises, but the Portland Trailblazers are always in the mix. Mm -hmm. And this year, the West is wide open. You look at the Warriors, the Thunder, mm -hmm. the Clippers, the Lakers, completely different than what they were last year. All right. You bring back all the pieces. Yeah. Uh, a title contender? Absolutely. Um, I mean, obviously, we lost a lot of guys that were, that, you know, built the culture there for a long time. And, you know, last year that you know we were a brotherhood and that's what got us that far and um now we have to kind of rebuild that chemistry but there's no question we brought in a lot of really talented guys and um as long as we can mesh and i don't think we'll have any problem doing that we're going to be we're going to be right up there with the best of them now we think about las vegas and it's it's an event town it's starting to become a professional sports team town yeah we've owned the landscape when it comes to the summer league and the preseason games and the showcases. Do you think this city could support an NBA franchise? Absolutely. I mean, just look how well the, the Knights have done and obviously the Raiders are coming here as well. And I mean, just the fan base out here, you know, they, they appreciate winning, you know, winning teams. And I think, um, I think the fans would love it. I mean, I would love it. Obviously I'm from here. It'd be awesome to play here, but um, I think it'd be a great city. And I think, uh, NBA players would love to come here. Last question. You've grown up your entire life thinking about the NBA. Mm -hmm. Now that you're 21 years old and you're living that, mm -hmm. is the dream matching with reality? I think it, you know, the, the reality of it kind of exceeded what I, you know, what I dreamed it would be like. And you, know, it's, you wake up and you get to play basketball and you get paid for it like that's your life. And it's, it's pretty crazy to think about that. but. Um, at the same time, it's, it's, it's not easy, you know, it's, it's still, you know, you're competing every night for a job, but, you know, when you can wake up, like I said, and play basketball every day and then go home and just, you know, chill and then, um, you know, all the opportunities that this game gives you as far as like other career paths or traveling to different countries, meeting people you would normally not get to meet, I mean, you know, it's, it's a gateway into a lot of good things and it's, it's unbelievable. Our thanks to Zach Collins. He's 21 years old. He's already made Las Vegas proud, and he's just beginning. Back to you, Chris.